much. No, no, it's a little, a little lower. Oh. That's good. Tani, this is this this is my first Zoom meeting. This is my third. <laughs> okay. And Cynthia, I'm going to start the webinar, so you'll start to see attendees populate as well. Okay. And you'll hear recording as. Starting moving. Move myself, but that's I'm getting too much glare. Are we ready? You may want to give it a couple more minutes. Okay. Just to All right. give uh, people a chance to, to come in. Okie dokie. Let me know when it's, I just have, when it's a go. All right. I just have six. So maybe you want to give 602, 603. You want to start? Oh. Play? All right. Well, we have a lot of people on already, so... Yeah, that's a good thing. You're doing pretty well. Damn, you have half a head. Sam? And now I see you. Okay. Perfect. Now we got. When you start talking, it will stop recording. Oh, happened? I don't know. Hey, Connie, can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. Oh, okay, good. All right. They'll switch around, I guess, cameras. Okay, Jeremy, you wanna you wanna start the roll call? Jeremy, you're muted. You know, it's funny. I was just saying we've been doing this for a while. We all should all have the hang of it, and I was muted. Um, <laughs> so I am, I am going to mute everybody. Um, when I call your name, uh, please unmute yourself and acknowledge that I called your name and then mute yourself again. I am only calling committee members. If you are a board member but not a member of the committee, I'm going to write your name down, but I'm not going to call your name. And now you're all muted. Cynthia Gonzalez. Present. Thank you. Pat Ruiz. Here. Thank you. Chriselle Amador. Present. Thank you. Joan Body. I'm just as bad here. <laughs> Thank you. Anthony Giglio. Barbara Lee, Christina Wen, Aurelis Martinez, Gloria Rodriguez Navoa. That is the end of the list, uh, Cynthia. It's all yours, and I'm going to write down the other board members' names. You're muted. I see a theme. <laughs> Good evening to all our attendees from the committee, the board, and the public. 
I want to wish you and our presenters a happy and healthy 2022. Tonight, we have two organizations seeking support for outpatient drug and alcohol treatment and recovery services in Sunset Park. During our 2021 board meetings, we have heard of the increase in the numbers of people in our area that show signs of alcohol and prescription drugs and opioid abuse, many of them homeless. There is no denial of the need to get these people treatment and to avoid the number of overdoses in our area. Tonight, we will hear from Monica Siergi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who is a registered nurse who will present on her agency under Angel's Wings, who proposes to open an outpatient drug and alcohol recovery center at 4802 Fifth Avenue. The second presenters are Connie Batoni Brown, Program Director of Genesis Detox of Brooklyn, formerly a resource beacon of hope, located at 449 39th Street, who is also seeking a letter of support for their New York State Oasis application. She is joined by her colleagues, Sam Benitez, CEO and managing partner, and Edwin Benitez, who is also a partner of the organization. They have a wealth of information on their mission statement and treatment models on their website. In the interest of time, we ask that presenters limit their presentation to about 15 minutes so that we have time for questions and answers from the committee members. We are going to begin tonight, <coughs> excuse me, with Ms. Monica Siergi, who is a registered nurse who will present on her agency under, agent, under Angel's Wings. Ms. Siergi? Yes, hi, uh, good evening. Thank good evening. you so much for finally having me. I know we've been sending emails back and forth. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. And I'm, not sure, and I'm not sure if I stated that your proposed outpatient uh, drug and alcohol recovery center is at 4802 Fifth Avenue. Uh, it's 45th Street. Uh, I can get the exact address in a second. Okay, because the email that we received stated 4802 Fifth Avenue. It might, it might be that the address is actually on Fifth Avenue. I can get you the exact address in a few seconds. Okay, thank you. So, You can go ahead and, you know, um, make your presentation. Okay, so I'm the first one, I'm assuming. There's yes. another person. Okay. So I did prepare a PowerPoint. I can let you share your screen. Give me one moment. Can you put on the PowerPoint? Right there. You can share your screen now. And we can see it. My face. My face. Should I do it full screen? Can you see it? This we is fine. We can see it. This is fine. If you can do full screen, that's fine too. Nope. It was it was better before. <laughs> Okay, there you so go. That's, good. that's good. Okay. So, good evening, esteemed members of the community. My name is Monica Sherjay, and I am an emergency medical professional, and I am seeking to open a drug and alcohol addiction rehabilitation center named Under Angels Wings Recovery Center. As part of OASIS accreditation, which we are in a process of seeking, Community acknowledgement is a minimum requirement to move forward with our project. Out of respect for the community, I am also seeking full approval and support. 
to assure that the recovery center will be welcome and beneficial for the community. Our goal at Under Angels Wings practice is to provide professional and dedicated services that build hope, healing, and renewal for those impacted by addiction. Through hands-on integrative approach, we seek to heal clients physically, mentally, and spiritually, to repair family dynamics, and to create resiliency and strength for the future. We are not affiliated with any religion, and we are committed to serving people of all races, sexualities, and genders, and offer support regardless of their immigration status. To protect who are at risk, we will offer sliding scale payment. And the Angel's Wings will offer comprehensive, science-based and individualized support. Our treatment will include cognitive behavioral therapy, individual and group therapy, family and couples therapy, and medication support. And the Angel's Wings will also offer referral to any needed services that we do not have the capacity to provide. This is not a comprehensive list and all service provided will adhere to OASIS standards of care. So benefits of having a new recovery center like on the Angel's Wings in your neighborhood include directly serving members of community who are impacted by the substance abuse, as well as their families and loved ones. Preventing and reducing death, injuries, and incarceration related to substance use, which threatens families and social networks in a community. In addition, a private rehab center can take some of the load of local hospitals, which are especially overwhelmed in our current health crisis. Finally, local treatment may also make enormous difference in recovery by simply reducing travel times for patients. So I am speaking with you all today as part of my search to find the right location for Under Angel's Wings. As a Brooklyn resident since 1991, living and working here, uh, I am a nurse in emergency room, which is located on 2nd Avenue and 55th Street, NYU Lutheran Langone. Uh, and doing the research for this presentation, I came across two community health profiles, one from 2015 and another one for 2018 for Community District 7. In 2015, only 68% of the residents of Sunset Park and Windsor Terrace self-reported having good health. Drug-related death were ranked as the eighth cause of death, claiming 41 lives. In 2018, drug-related death were the third leading cause of premature death in community claiming 38 lives. Premature death is defined as death prior to the age of 65. As this information may no longer paint an accurate picture, I appreciate the community members' own thoughts on the need for rehabilitation center and whether these are in fact issues that are of concern to the community, because I do know that there are major problems with alcohol in drug working in emergency room. I see it every single day, especially right now, the numbers are rising sky high. My interest in this project stems from my experience as an emergency medical professional for over 20 years. Every day I witness firsthand the damage drugs and alcohol addiction has on our Brooklyn community, on its individuals and families. In my personal life, I also supported a loved one who struggled with addiction, 
which gained me additional insight to the process from the other side of the clipboard. Most of all, I have deep respect for people of Brooklyn and New York, and I want to do my part in serving the community. I appreciate everyone for your time and attention to this topic. I appreciate on hearing your questions and concerns or comments you may have. Thank you. Jeremy, I would like to start um, with the questions from the, the participants in the committee. So members are. of the board, you could raise your hand if you would like to ask a question now. Members of the public, we ask you to wait a moment. Uh, folks, you can use the raise hand function if you have any questions or comments. Cynthia, I see, oh, now I see a hand. Okay, uh, David Estrada. Hi, I'd just like to ask a little bit about the history of your company, how many other locations you operate and how long you've been in business and this is, under what certifications you operate. This is a startup company. It's not in business yet. It's gonna be brand new and I do not have no other location. And what, what volume of service do you anticipate offering? I mean, you're building out with a provision to help how many people? Hopefully it's gonna be 40 people uh, per day or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the average number is ooh, I'm aiming for 40. And, two and groups you... in the morning and two groups in the evening and in between individual therapy. Can you, can you describe the therapies you're offering? Are you offering, uh, is this a, um, you know, a, a therapeutic setting where uh, medications are administered or is this a therapeutic setting where people are receiving, you know, like psychotherapy or cognitive therapy? It's or gonna be cognitive therapy, family, group therapy, uh, special groups for professionals like nurses, firefighters, uh, police, uh, and also Suboxone program. Uh, uh, tell, can you tell us more about that program? The Suboxone program I, uh, is gonna be prescribed based on the uh, outpatient uh, rules and regulations of OASIS. We're gonna have a medical director and a doctor that has a, a waiver that is able to prescribe uh, medication. Uh, we will do the teaching and we will be able hopefully administer the first dose of the medication, but then the patient uh, takes his own medication at home. Okay, and, and the reason I'm asking, thank, thank you for those answers because they, they help give a picture. Uh, one last thing. Um, uh, is this a, a, on the ground level or is it an upper floor professional upper medical floor. suite? Upper floor professional medical suite. Yes. Okay. So, so you're saying you will have dispensing of medication on site, but you're proposing that it's only yeah. initial? Just the, the dose. initial dose to see mm -hmm. how the patient will react to the medication uh, just to you know, introduce the first dose but not uh, remaining doses. Uh, depends how long the person is gonna require to be on the medication. Everybody's uh, treatment and journey is a little bit different and they need. Thank you uh -huh. so much, I appreciate, Monica, I appreciate the details. Monica, I, I noticed that when I tried to find information on the group, um, I wasn't able to uh, see any affiliations that you may have with other organizations. I know that your organization um, received uh, uh, state, um, how should I say, you were incorporated in May of 2021. Uh, is your organization accredited to provide these services? Not yet, not yet. That's uh, part of the step with OASIS that I do need to, uh, introduce the idea of the program to community and they do require uh, acknowledgement from the community and I would love support as well. 
Okay. I have Pat Ruiz next. Hi, thank you so much, Monica, for your presentation. Uh, my questions are, will you work with seniors that are addicted and how would you work with them? Are you going to be providing counseling for family members? Yes. Uh, yes, for seniors, yes, for family members. I think that families are very important to be part of the recovery process. Uh, many people do manage better with their struggles when they do have strong support, which is usually, you know, the loved ones, the closest family, and definitely uh, very, very big on the idea of family uh, support and uh, group therapy with family. And is that, I guess, maybe I'm, I'm not sure how to phrase it. Um, how will you work with folks to prevent use? I mean, is how long are they, do they stay with you? I mean, people have lapses. How, what is your, your goal? You know, uh, everybody is different. Uh, everybody has a different problem and uh, reacts to a therapy in a different way. Many people start therapy and they don't finish. Many people require 30 days of, you know, uh, intensive therapy. Other people might require six months. So based on the individual need of a client and how they're going to adjust to either medication or group or individual therapy is going to be on individual problem and how well they do. And got, you know, got the bit someone should last. Do you take them back in? Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Okay, thank you so it's much. Not, not how many times you fall, it's how many times many you times. pick yourself up. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I don't see additional board members with their hands up. Members of the public, if you would like to speak, ask a question or make a statement, please use the raise hand function. Uh, Cynthia, in addition to that, I do have at least one question in the q and I will ask uh, at the end of this. Okay. I have a couple of attendees with one attendee with hands up. Okay. Uh, George Cardona, you could unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Why well, I'm not against recovery facilities because I actually support uh, individuals recover from addiction. I work with nonprofits, AAAs, and so forth. But having said that, I also see what circles around these organizations were not managed correctly or understaffed. It is just not good for a block like 48th Street or 43rd to have this. I'm a little disturbed that nobody knows the exact location. Uh, I thought that would have been something nice. The other thing is I was hoping that the Community Board 7 would have provided information on these centers and for us to do our own research and so forth to see how they're doing, okay? Uh, how is the community board expected to vote without everybody knowing all the facts? The other thing, are the organizations up to date with tax filings? Do they owe back taxes? Do they have a good reputation? Uh, always I ask, whoever supports this, where do you live? It seems many supporters of these facilities don't even live near here. They usually live far away. If you support this, have it by your house. An important notice, many times when people finish the recovery center, they hang out in the neighborhood and again, crime will go higher. We already have problems with people sitting on stoops, getting high, committing crimes, breakings into homes, cars, stalls, assaulting people, pissing and defecating on people's property. Now across this place on Fifth Avenue, if it was 48th Street, there's a bakery across the street. And everybody knows by that bakery building, there's already a big, big, big active drug dealings that has taken place, which is gonna get something across the street. And that's gonna bring more danger and more issues 
to this neighborhood. We have to stop having Sunset Park being a dumping ground. You know, other communities do not have as many problems. Why do we continue to have these? You know, and I'm not attacking anyone, but I need to know, you know, are we concerned with quality of life? These are issues. Is it a city council person issue? Is it a state assembly issue? Is it a major issue? And then I'm wondering, is this all just for show and decisions are just going to be made no matter what? Or are we really having some input? You know, I think this is very, very important. Many times I speak and then people come to me in the streets and say they agree with me, but they don't say anything at the meetings. And sometimes I wonder if I'm alone in my way of thinking. If you agree with me, let the community know that I'm not in the minority. And we have to, you know, again, no more dumping at Sunset Park. It should be spread all over. You got people from the outside bringing things in. I'm willing to answer questions. And Jeremy, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, George. Uh, Just to clarify, both organizations are asking us for uh, a letter of support um, that has no bearing other than uh, giving the board's position. We do not have an actual say in whether or not they get accredited. Um, But but this is uh, our portion of the public process. I have Jessica Klaus next. Uh, before you bring Jessica on, I'd like to say something about George. Uh, George, you had a lot of great questions and stuff, but I do want you to know that the information about these two organizations are typically sent to the committee members. Uh, it doesn't really go out to the public unless you are a non-board uh, member that is on my committee. So this is why maybe you didn't have the uh, information to get the research ahead of time, but I want to invite you. I want to welcome you to join, uh, you know, the committee, because I do understand a lot of your concerns. And I think that everyone in Sunset Park uh, um, has the very same concerns because we do see it. In my introductory remarks, I talked about the fact that Last year, we, um, you know, it was voiced in in the board meetings about what we were witnessing, and this is why it's important for us to have these types of uh, groups to come and provide the help and the support to the people that are in our district, you know, that we can, you know, reach out to and help. Jessica Klaus, you may uh, unmute yourself. Hi, how are you guys? Um, uh, I'm a business owner on Fifth Avenue and I just, uh, George had some good points that I just wanted to see if, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, um, who's presenting today for um, this outpatient uh, service. Would would you like to rebuttal to some of the, how you would handle or, or what your thoughts are on increasing the sort of um, amount of people that we have on the streets that are um, drinking and um, using substance abuse um, and and how, how you feel about the chance of it increasing in Sunset Park. Um, like, do you want to take the opportunity to sort of give your side of, of how, how you feel about what George said? Because obviously many of us who are, are residents and business owners have the same concern as George. So maybe you want to. I completely understand because uh, it, it is very important to everybody to live in a beautiful, healthy uh, community, uh, but to my knowledge, bringing more rehab centers can actually make a better living for the community, not only community, but business owners as well. Instead of having people hanging out on the corner and doing drugs, maybe we could have people, uh, fathers, mothers, coming upstairs to the rehab center 
and getting support and love and care and hopefully having better future for everyone. Uh, George asked me, uh, I believe you mentioned something, do I live in the community? No, George, I do not live in the community, but I am one of the emergency room nurses in the community. I see every single day what is happening in the location uh, of community board number seven. And the numbers are getting sky high younger and younger population um, coming to emergency room, not only you know, being intoxicated with mental problems because of their parents are using. Um, I think that would be extremely beneficial uh, rehab center in this community. Um, even though I don't live in the community, I am part of the community because I do work there and I spend most, probably more time at work than at home. The location of the center that is being proposed and is absolutely not written in stone, uh, we do have the address, is 4802 Fifth Avenue. I just wasn't sure about, because this, there's a side door. So the side door is located on 48th Street. That's what I was looking to tell you exactly, because if you look at the address, it shows store downstairs. So the side entrance, I'm not sure what number is the side entrance, but I believe it goes under the same number, 4802 Fifth Avenue, and it's on fourth floor. Uh, main uh, ground floor and second, I believe, is the store, the clothing store. Then it's a uh, dental office, and upstairs would be, used to be also medical office, I believe cardiology. And now hopefully we can open a rehab center. I am very dedicated nurse and I would never propose something to bring to our community because I do consider myself being part of the community that would bring danger or violence or anything disrespectful. That would not be right. Uh, I'm a mother, you know, I'm a nurse, and I only want what's beneficial to the community. Um, I have Elizabeth Rojas next. Board members, uh, just give it one moment. I only have a, uh, one more. Elizabeth Rojas, you could unmute yourself. You could unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, uh, thank you uh, for opening um, the microphone. Um, I am, I was a long-term resident of Sunset Park. I actually grew up in Sunset Park and I actively work in Sunset Park. Um, I am a um, I am a broker uh, in the Sunset Park area, and uh, what happens is is that, that one of the biggest concerns that I have is on Fifth Avenue and uh, Fifth Avenue, which is a, a commercial area. I don't think I have nothing against the, the program because I think it's a good thing, um, and we already have um, something in the community. But I personally think that Fifth Avenue is not the location to have this kind of program. It is, it is, it is, um, it is candy to the individual that will be attending. You have merchants, you have stores, it's a shopping center, you have buses. I take the bus on 48th street to go home um, and it's not the right location. Safety purposes for seniors. And especially with New York, with the crime rate and what's actually happening, that people get locked up and they're released immediately and the merchants have a problem with the stealing, this is going to entice, okay, individuals, okay, that have these problems and it's like giving candy to them. The location is not ideal. Sunset Park um, with the community has fought, okay, for, to better the, to better the, uh, the community. We, we tried to do that with industry city and it was turned down. Everybody was against it. 
This year, I think that the people in Sunset Park should join together and the community board and say, you know what, enough is enough. Because how is, how is Sunset Park going to benefit from this? I don't see any benefits. Sunset Park already has a place on 39th Street. The location is, is perfect, Genesis. If you're not aware of Genesis, look it up. Contact the people. The people from Sunset Park, they live there all their life. They know the community. The people that are involved are involved. They live there. And to, who's going to take responsibility when problems happen on Fifth Avenue? Property owners, when they're aware of this, they're not going to be very happy. If, if, if the community board agrees to this, you know what's going to happen? It's going to backfire. It's going to backfire. And so if you already have something in the area, listen, look into what's there, look into Genesis. They're, I think that they're looking to do the same thing. They've already been there for five years. Let go with that. Look and see what they're doing. Get more involved. You can just have every program in the city come into Sunset Park. You can't do that. It seems that rather than going forward, you're going backwards. Okay, Elizabeth, they're just, they're just here Thank to make you. their proposal. So we're going to move on to the other questions there. And I also have uh, some questions that I want to ask as well. Go ahead, Jeremy. So I, I have uh, uh, Cynthia Felix first. Hi, uh, I'm calling, um, I'm asking some questions regarding Monica. Thank you for the presentation, but I had some concerns. I know you said you're an emergency room nurse and I appreciate your service. Thank you for that. But I did have some questions regarding the experience of the people that are going to be here. It's great that, you know, we want to offer these services, but I do have concerns about the location. There's a school near, nearby. There's also a liquor store across the street that has caused some issues uh, with people hanging around. And I know some people who have heard about this proposal are also concerned about the possibility of it ever being converted to a place where drug use would be allowed like it happened in East Harlem, right? So in East Harlem, it started off like that, and then drug use was allowed. So can you tell us a little bit more about the experience of the people that have running this? I know you said you're a nurse, but do any of the founders or any of the people have any experience doing this? All the individuals that are gonna work in the center, in the recovery center, not a candy center, it's a recovery center. Uh, where people can recover. They're gonna be board certified physicians, nurses, counselors. Uh, yes, Genesis is there, but every single day we're getting tons of patients that are coming through emergency room. Some of them, they will make it and walk out to the community some of them they want. If Genesis would be enough, I wouldn't be taking care of 15 or 17 or 18 year old or mother's father's dying in emergency room, would I? No, I don't think so. Uh, I do understand and I do respect everybody's opinion, but we have to realize the reason why there's two people presenting today to the community because there is a problem. There is a problem and the numbers are showing the problem. You can't just say, oh, there's one center and that's it. We're not gonna have nothing else. I understand that, but that one center is not enough because if you walk down the street, you see the problem happening on the streets on 5th Avenue, on 2nd Avenue, on 1st Avenue. As sad as it sounds and as harsh it might sound from me, there is a huge problem in our community, my place of work and place where all of you live. And this is not a candy store, the rehabilitation center that I'm proposing. This is hopefully a solution to the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Well, I have a follow-up, Cynthia, because I don't think she answered my question. I think she was addressing Elizabeth, because that was Elizabeth's thing. 
my whole thing was Monica, people who are running the center. And also I think it's disingenuous to say there's only one thing because you also have the family health center on 49th street that supports mental health and behavioral health. And that's right there and has been there for a really long time. And also you're making the assumption that everybody wants help. Unfortunately, not everybody wants help. So yes, we all agree it's a problem and there has to be greater outreach. But like I said, my concern is because it's a startup company, what are some of the things that you have in place? And it seemed like the presentation, at least today, was very bad both. That was a lot of concerns I had. Like you said, you're right next to a dental. There's kids going in. Is there any security? Like none of those things have really been looked at. And those are the questions I had. How are you getting referrals? You know, all these things come up. So you could think about it, but it's just that. And, you know, I think the location is, has a lot to do with it. I mean, Fifth Avenue is a very busy corridor and people are concerned already about how it is. And, the, and you're right above Pretty Girl, which already uses most of the sidewalk up too. So there's a lot of issues that are come, gonna come up with that. And I don't think anyone's disagreeing that drug use is a problem. I think we all agree with that. But I just think is how we're going to manage it. And there are plenty of places in the neighborhood that do support, but sometimes people do not want help. Yes, I absolutely agree. You know, thank you very much for your feedback. And those are great, great questions. You know, we are at the very, very beginning of stages with the recovery center. And I am by all means open to suggestion and to another location in community board number seven. Uh, this is not a location that is in, written in stone, that it has to be this particular office. Uh, by all means, you know, I can look for another location in the community. I think I'm more, um, more not so concerned about this particular location on fourth floor. Uh, I am a little bit concerned that I see and I hear uh, kind of negative um, feedback about putting another recovery center in the community. So I'm not really understanding, is it the location on Fifth Avenue and 48th Street or in general uh, opening another rehabilitation center uh, in the community? But I am open to suggestions uh, to a different address. I don't want to disrespect uh, or make anybody in the community unhappy. But at the same time, I am a strong believer that the community could use another center. It doesn't matter if it's going to be on 2nd Avenue or 5th Avenue. I think uh, would be beneficial definitely in community board number seven. Thank you. Thank you. I have Gloria Rodriguez Navoa next. I think that we're gonna keep her the last question because we have another whole nother presentation. So, um, and I think that the questions that I had were asked by Cynthia Felix. So I'm not gonna bother to ask them. Gloria? Yeah. She said something um, and it struck me. She, um, Monica, you stated that you, that there were going to be um, some drugs administered and they were from a doctor from Oasis. Well, I would really like to know who Oasis is, how long they've been there, what do they actually do wherever Oasis is? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about Oasis as a part of your, um, uh, 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 of your facility and they're the ones that are going to be um, administrating the drugs. Well, we really need to know who they are, what's their reputation, what are they doing at other locations, dot, dot, dot. I, I think, uh, Ms. Gloria, Ms. Rodriguez, uh, you misunderstood. There's not going to be administration. There's not going to be like a methadone clinic. This is a prescription that is being prescribed by a doctor. You go okay. to a pharmacy, you pick up medication from pharmacy. There's not gonna be a distribution center in the recovery center. 
When a patient goes pick up his medication from the pharmacy, a lot of times people that are going through withdrawals or they don't have a support at home don't feel comfortable taking for the very first time the medication to see how the body is going to react. We're going to have a doctor on premises that is going to be, and a nurse that is going to be able to tell the patient or client, yes, please come to the recovery center with your medication that you picked up from the pharmacy. And if you wish to take the first dose in presence of medical professional, which is a doctor certified by um, Office of uh, Administration Services, Addiction Services, uh, then they're gonna be able to do that. If they wanna take it home, they can take it home. But this is gonna be based on a uh, comfort of a patient. I, 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 I heard you, I understand you, I, I understand that. but. You haven't answered my question. My okay. question was about, you said that the doctor was coming from Oasis. Did, did I Gloria, hear that right? No. Gloria, Oasis is the state agency to which she is applying. So okay. it's a state Thank agency. You. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Okay. Well, Ms. Sergi, Sergi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Sergi. Yeah. Uh, we thank you so very much for coming yeah. and making your presentation. And I, and I think that you appreciate, you know, the fears of people, you know, when they hear of services like, you know, these coming into the neighborhood. And, and I know that there is definitely a need for it. And uh, we just want to wish you luck uh, on receiving your you know, accreditation, and um, hopefully, you know, you'll consider um, the fact that that location uh, is not really ideal, and it's also not uh, ADA accessible because, you know, people with disabilities cannot walk up four flights. So that might be another consideration that you may have would be to get something that, you know, all people, seniors, young people, disabled people can come and, and access your services. So Yes, and I just want also, you know, members of the community to understand that uh, this is uh, not that uh, it has to be. This is something that we can voice our concerns. You know, you can, Ms. Rodriguez can voice her concerns and I'm, you know, I'm listening. I'm listening and I'm taking notes and it's gonna be ongoing process about the exact office. Okay, we wish you the very best. Thank you, thank you so With much. Under Angel's thank Wings. You. Under Have Angel's Wings. Have a good wing. evening, thank you. And with that, I am going to again introduce Miss Connie Petoni Brown and Mr. Sam and Edwin Benitez so that they can make a presentation on Genesis Detox of Brooklyn. Welcome again. Thank you. Okay, for those, hi, I finally get to see Jeremy's face. I've talked to him on the phone, but my name is Connie Pentony Brown. I'm a BFA advanced KSEC G, which means I have a specialization in gambling. I also am a credential prevention professional and I'm recognized worldwide um, with repacity in all states. Uh, just for history, I've opened a hundred bed residential facility in Crown Heights. I've overseen six outpatients and now I'm here at this detox. Um, we currently operate under New York Office of Addiction Support and Services. That's the an acronym OASIS. So we have 35 beds. We are located at 449 39th Street. We are also accredited by the Joint Commission, formerly known as JCO, which is an accreditation that we received uh, for being an outstanding healthcare facility in the United States. We have been servicing those with substance abuse since opening of 2017. We opened with 20 beds. 
And last year we expanded based on need to another 15 beds. In the past four and a half years, we have treated, based on my OASIS reporting, 5,107 people, 2,411 were from Kings County, and 528 of those reside within walking distance of the facility. We pick up all of our patients. We have our own employees that are drivers. We pick them up, we bring them here, they're escorted into the building. When they leave here, they're provided transportation home or transportation to the next rehab or residential facility that they're going to. While patients are outside, because we understand the concern about loitering, we don't want it either. We work hand in hand, we're next door to the family center. Um, and they also have a lot of folks sitting outside. So if someone's waiting for transportation, we do have one of our aides monitoring them to make sure that they don't deviate from the front of the building. Uh, we've been asked over the last four and a half years by many of our patients why we don't have an outpatient treatment program. Because when they're completing us, we're sending them out of the community. And we know that if you have to travel a distance to continue your aftercare, you're going to be less successful. Uh, we also are getting calls from the community uh, about folks that are using cocaine, folks that are using marijuana, folks with recent DWI arrests, folks that are drinking but not enough to constitute the need for detox, um, and also for monitoring and starting addiction medicine such as Suboxone. Um, we also are getting calls from, as an outpatient, if we open an outpatient treatment program, we're also allowed under state regulations to treat a family member. So in other words, if there is a mother or a father or a sister, a grandparent who has a family member who's addicted and that family member won't attend treatment, we can treat them to assist them in coping themselves with that addiction that's disrupting their family. We explored the option of opening an outpatient based only on the need to express expressed by our community members and our patients. We also spoke to many of the social workers and medical professionals at Lutheran Hospital who have encouraged us. A lot of the folks that go through the ER, the social worker are are referring them to us for a detox. We have a memorandum of understanding with Sunset Terrace Family Health Center. We've been working closely with them for the last five years. I have a letter of support from Dr. Acuso, who has since left. So now I'm working with Dr. Chu, who took his position as medical director. Um, we were also involved with Lutheran Medical Center's residence program, where we had the residents prior to COVID coming over to the facility to speak with our staff and our um, patients to better understand what addiction was. So when they became medical doctors, they had a clearer understanding of it. The outpatient would be located here. Right now, the detox is on the second and third floor. We are looking to open the outpatient on the fourth floor. Um, tentative hours might be Monday through Friday, nine to five, with three days a week having evening hours because we do understand there's a working population. Um, and Saturdays, maybe 10 to three. Um, individual group therapy, uh, peer recovery services, um, medication management. Medication management, that is what Mark was speaking about. Working with um, our medical director here who would also work in the outpatient. We work many years together in outpatient, working primarily with, um, I'm gonna call it addiction medication maintenance where a person might come to us, you administer the first dose, but we strongly believe that that person needs to be in treatment. The medication would be prescribed three or 
maximum seven days at a time because there is a lot of diversion of addiction medicine. We also would offer a medication like naltrexone for those that are alcohol. We're known right now, you can go on our website, Genesis Detox of Brooklyn, you can see patient comments. 90% um, of the ratings are between four and five stars. And one of the biggest thing is that a lot of folks say this is the only detox they've been in where they've been treated with respect, kindness, and genuine positive regard. We believe in recovery. Um, and opening the outpatient, we want to continue that same positive regard for patients. We are focusing on this community members, on those folks that are sitting on the stoop. You know, if that's your neighbor's child, we want that child here. I, we don't want folks coming from miles around. We want folks that yeah. live in, that have places to live so that we can better monitor them. Um, for me personally, I met my husband on 38th Street in 1973. He grew up on 45th Street. I got married in St. Michael's and here I am in a few years retiring, started out in Sunset Park and I'm here in Sunset Park. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is we just want to motivate. We want to continue the journey that we've already done. I don't think that coming on 39th Street, you've seen crowds of folks in front of the building. Well, Family Support Center with the food bank drives, you'll see the lines, but that's to help the folks in the community. And we work closely with them as well. And Sam and Edwin can tell you a little bit more about why they got involved with this program. And then I can answer any specific questions on, you know, our programming and what our intent to do is and, you know, what we do here now, if you want to know. Thank you. So we're going to bring on Sam first and then Edwin and uh, hear from them as well. Mm -hmm. Sam? Unmute yourself, Sam, on button on the top. <laughs> Let me see if I can FaceTime. Off. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear us? Hi. Yes, Hi. How you doing? I'm going to do the talking. Um, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, basically my name is Edwin Benitez. I'm one of the three brothers uh, who own Genesis Detox of Brooklyn. We moved into Sunset Park in 1974. We grew up on 50th Street between 4th and 5th Avenues. And I still live in Sunset Park. I live on 40th Street between 3rd and 4th Avenue, uh, basically around the block from Genesis Detox of Brooklyn. Um, uh, my parents own property in Sunset Park and my brother Sam uh, owns uh, Powerhouse Construction, which is based out of Sunset Park. And he's had that business for over 32 years. Uh, he was married at St. Michael's Church and he married uh, his wife, Donna, who also grew up in Sunset Park. Uh, I was a member of the New York City Police Department for over 30 years. Uh, 25 of those years was in the Narcotics Division. Um, I served, uh, I was assigned to a federal task force that investigated uh, narcotics organizations importing drugs into New York City. Uh, so I know firsthand the scourge uh, of narcotics uh, on our neighborhoods. I mean, I saw it firsthand. Um, uh, uh, basically, we've been operating now for, oh, for close to five years, uh, we've served the community. Uh, our, our location is on a commercial block in a commercial building. We're right across the street from the firehouse. Um, we really haven't had uh, complaints in the area. If 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 uh, if anybody complains or people uh, hanging outside, we take care of that problem immediately. That's that's the one thing I was totally you know. Uh, we we work together with the seventy second precinct. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, we're, we're, we're looking to, to expand. We're not going to another location. We're not gonna go to another building. It's in the same exact building. And we're just gonna open up, uh, wanna open up an outpatient facility on a different floor. 
So basically nothing, nothing changes. Um, that's basically it. I wanna thank you for your time. Thank you. I have a, uh, I have a question for Connie. Connie, um, uh, how, how do you address the homeless population that you serve? Now? Yeah. yeah, inpatient now, we do get referrals for folks that are homeless. And the primary goal, if someone comes to us that's homeless, we're not a revolving door. So from here, we refer, if they want to go, because it's a patient's choice, um, to residential treatment programs. Uh, folks like that, they need to go into residential uh, treatment. Stukasa, Samaritan, Phoenix House are some of the um, well-known programs. And to be honest with you, if they don't follow through, their chart is flagged that they're not allowed to come back. You have to follow up with treatment. You know, and at an outpatient level, to be homeless, it, it, it's difficult to be compliant with treatment. It's very difficult. So we, we prefer to... You know, you've got to go to rehab, you've got to go to residential treatment program, going into a detox, going back on the street is not healthy, not, it's not helpful. Um, most of our current population is from homes. You know, they're, they're coming from, uh, as Monica, has, a lot of them are young. So, you know, parents are throwing them out, you know, we involve the parents with us, um, consents to speak parents, if a person is here, actually of any age, because we speak 18, I think our oldest was 79, um, and they want to leave, we're right on the phone with the family. We get the family on the phone, we get the family involved, have them do the consequences. So, you know, that's what we're primarily doing. Our homeless population coming in here really isn't that, isn't that high at all. And residential treatment is where they belong. Okay, thank you. We'll open up the uh, floor to questions. I see one hand up. I see Joan Body first. Connie, I want to thank you and also uh, Sam for your presentation. It was uh, quite impressive. Um, a question and a comment. Mm -hmm. um, is this uh, your building? Is it going to be, or is it right now completely um, disability accessible? Oh, I think I'll answer that one. Uh, yeah, the, the, the building uh, it's a it's a five story a six story building and it's ADA compliance has elevators. With two, with two exits for the entire building, uh, three with the elevator. But we do have an elevator to, to bring patients up and down. And, okay. and, and as uh, Cynthia Felix had brought up previously, there are many, many schools in the area. There's another one coming online. Well, maybe not, I, I don't know if it's this year or next but it's right down the block. And that's a big, big concern for the community board. We work very hard to get schools that are desperately needed in our area. And um, I just worry about the children in the area with, of course, what's going on, but Will there be more security than what you have uh, mentioned by bringing people in and making sure they got home? Um, I, yes, I mean, I can answer, I can answer that. I mean, um, if you live in the neighborhood and you come to us for treatment, you need to go home. I grew up in the neighborhood, by the way. My grandfather came here in 1898 and settled in the neighborhood. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> my, 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 wife, my wife's father, to add to that, my wife's father did the construction in OLPH Foundation. <laughs> wow. 
Yep. No, our, our, our expectation is um, if you, 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 you don't belong to your belong going home. That, that's where you belong. We haven't had that problem here. Um, and years ago, five years ago, there was a program in the building and there were no problems with that. Um, hearing about a school, the only thing I'm thinking of is right now we have employees, our biggest parking, and we all pray for when the schools are closed. But no, you know, as a mother, as a grandmother, um, Sam and Edwin have children and they don't have grandchildren yet. Sorry, right, guys. Um, we're all very, very cognizant about people coming to treatment and leaving treatment, not loitering in front of the building, um, not deviating from what you're supposed to do, which is to recover. If you have nothing to do afterwards, go to an AA meeting, go to an NA meeting, go over to the church, you know, do something. Hanging around is not healthy for you, nor is it for the community. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck, Donna. Good luck. I have Pat Ruiz next. Hi, Connie and the Benitezers. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I have two questions. Uh, number one, what is the, the youngest uh, client that you would serve? And number two, what is the percentage of community board district um, clients that you have versus those coming from outside of the district? Okay, the youngest that we can treat is 18. Um, you need to go and get a, another application to treat uh, under 18. Um, so we'd be treating 18 and up. Um, no, I, I just lost my train of thought. Second question, I'm sorry. Second part. The second question was um, the, the percentage of clients in the community like, board district seven versus not the district seven. like i said um initially we treated 2400 people from king's county 500 and where it was 528 lived in codes one one two three two one one two two all so that's right here so that was the motivating factor to open because it was the complaint you know, why can't I just stay eyes open? I got to go all the way to wherever, downtown Brooklyn for treatment. Got to go to Bed for treatment. So that was one of the motivating factors. So whatever percentage, I'm terrible with math, of 2,400 to 528 uh, is, was that? 20%. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Sam. He's the number guy. When it comes yep. to dollars and cents, I can do it, but otherwise, no. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and the other thing is, you know, looking at an outpatient, we have to look at a realistic budget and a realistic number of patients. So our initial, based on our numbers that we're referring currently to outpatient of people within walking distance, realistically, 125, 150 patients the first year. And that's not all at once because you can't keep patients for a year. You know, the insurance is which were Medicaid, um, were Medicaid providers, managed care providers, commercial, commercial insurances. Um, we help folks that are eligible for Medicaid or any of the other programs. We work with some community representatives and we help people. So if we get a phone call and you're eligible for insurance, we'll get you on it so we can give you help. And we'll continue to do outpatient basis. And that piggybacks to, we have to be ADA compliant and to have the contracts. Thank you. You're welcome. I have Cynthia Felix next. Hi, hi, Benitez Brothers, 50th Street in the, in the house. Four, how you doing? <laughs> Roberto's cousin. How are you guys? Um, good, good, good. 
thank you for the presentation. I had a question and then a comment, also something from Ray Acevedo because he cannot speak. So Connie, I'm sorry, but did you guys mention the timeline? When do you hope to open? Um, we would love to open by the summer, but this is a process. You know, we meet with you and then we have to meet with Oasis um, and the Department of Health. Um, and then all that gets sent to Oasis and we just sit here and pray that they put, put our application through quickly. The issue now is, of course, COVID. Nobody's working in offices. So you know, I'd love to open by the summer, but I, I don't know. I don't know. And okay. that's just blame it on COVID and nobody in an office anywhere. And do you guys do any prevention services? Like, do you speak to, you know, Joan mentioned there's a school. Are there any prevention services that you provide so people don't go on this path? I'm sure you, you I did look at your Google. Um, you have many success stories. Any thought about harnessing those folks so that, especially our younger children, especially we heard from Monica, I've seen it myself. I'm sure you're seeing it. You could treat them at 18, but we very well known many start much earlier. So is there any thought of doing that? Maybe not now, but in the future? Yeah, I mean, that's like, you know, I get very nervous speaking, but I'm getting better right now. Um, that's my credentialing, credential pre prevention uh, specialist that for many years, I was at the schools, you know, doing presentations on substance use and the risk involved with substance use. So I've never been opposed to it. And, you know, we have all credentialed folks here now that, um, you know, if the, the school right on 38th Street called us, hey, we're having a, a presentation. Uh, would you guys come over and speak about uh, drug use and, you know, ways to avoid it, et cetera? We don't have a problem doing that. Okay, that's great to hear because I think that would alleviate some of the concerns about the schools around and seeing it, you know, so it doesn't glamorize it, right? Um, no. So thank you for that. And then Ray Acevedo would like to express his support. He wants everyone to know that the program has been, been there for five years with no problem. It's a very suitable location. And the new applicant, they didn't really have a track record and he agreed with both George and Elizabeth. And he also wanted to thank the Benitez Family Foundation for a contribution and supporting victims of sexual abuse. Thank you thank so you. much. I have Pat Ruiz. I just have a quick question. I, I'm just trying to visualize where you are. Are you in the, in the formerly um, resource training center that was run by Donna May Dupala? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Yes. you Sam built the building. I, I, actually, I actually constructed that building on that block and I also built two other buildings on that block, which is the, oh. family, cent which is the family center. Right next and the door. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. building next door and the one down the block, the small tall building also. Okay, I know the building well and, and I, that's a great location. Great location. Thank you. Cynthia, I have four hands up from attendees. May I start to uh, call them? Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you. I have Linda Orlando first. You can uh, uh, unmute yourself. Linda Orlando, you can unmute yourself. Last call for Linda Orlando. What's happening? Uh, you have the opportunity to speak. Oh, no, I didn't ask for an opportunity to speak. I'm listening. Oh, your hand is up. Okay, no problem. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, no thank you. Maria Roca, your hand is up. Okay, and I'm on correct. Um, I said, correct, you can hear me? Can hear you. you can hear me. Okay, yes. Uh, good evening, all. Um, I apologize. I arrived uh, late thanks to the B63 and all them folks, but um, and I'll catch up on YouTube with the uh, beginning of the uh, meeting. 
Um, I am the the founder and uh, president of the Friends of Sunset Park, all volunteer, a very small, very uh, local uh, a group that has founded in 1995 to look after the park, um, Sunset Park, the park, and, um, and make it the best it could be, or it can be. Um, mm -hmm. We've had a problem. Off and on, we have problems with all kinds of things. And um, just want to put that in your uh, radar as to um, our hope that whoever comes into the community to including schools, including whatever, where um, that are attracted to obviously a beautiful park like we have, that people do um, sort of a um, preventative, um, have a pre preventative attitude towards the park and, and tell their clients, their patients, how whatever their um, patrons about that they are by visiting here, whether it's on an outpatient basis or whatever, that we consider everyone a, um, a collaborator in keeping our park safe and clean and welcoming. So I'm just gonna put that out front. I, this question, the question I'm gonna ask probably was answered before and I apologize for that, but um, what um, motivated other than, Sam, forgive me for um, using, um, addressing you by your first name. You mentioned that you were a former narcotics and NYPD task member, task force member. Beyond that, what are the reasons motivated the family to get into the um, um, addiction treatment uh, business? Anyone can answer that, anyone. Well, for, for, start, for starters, uh, my, uh, when I used to work for my father, uh, he used to own a, a building on 41st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. And we've owned real estate throughout that neighborhood and, and businesses and owning those businesses, even back then in the 80s, we always had people that used to work for us that were involved with drugs, including one of my own cousins that, that died from a drug overdose. So we've always been involved with uh, workers in the neighborhood. We used to supply plenty of work for, for drug addicts that nobody wanted to hire. We always gave them second chances and people who were coming out of prisons that nobody wanted to give second chances to. We were always there in the community through our businesses to hire these guys and help them out. Um, our okay. father actually had a construction company and I could tell you that probably 90% of his workers uh, had previous drug addictions. Um, and, and my father to this day, uh, my father's 85 years old now, but these guys, uh, after they, they, they got treatment and they got better, I, I run into these people every once in a while and they tell me if it wasn't for your father, I'd be dead. Um, so we come from family. Listen, our family is a very Christian family. We've come from uh, a family that we're always uh, out there trying to help people. And that's the way we were raised. And um, we decided, you know, at that point to, to get into this. Well, I'm, I, everyone has flaunted their uh, uh, Sunset Park pedigree. And I, I would be remiss if I don't throw in two cents on that. Our family arrived in 1964. Uh, I was 14 years old. So my memory is very clear and um, about what uh, the, the issues, the challenges in this neighborhood uh, were on a, uh, many levels, drugs being and other um, addictions being uh, probably the most visible. Um, now, I also, how long have you been at 39th Street or was there a predecessor to your being at 39th Street for, uh, in the, on the inpatient, uh, at the inpatient level? level? At which level? How long have we been on 39th Street? Only inpatient, right? Yeah, there was, 
there was an outpatient here from 2000. Oh, yours, your company, your company. I'm not talking about anybody else. I, I... We opened in May of 2017. And our organization, did you used to have like community members come in? Because I went to a couple of events um, in Sunset Park as a, a provider at other jobs. And we also did the peer that really hot day last summer. Uh, Melissa Decourt um, invited us to go. So I don't know if your organization no, ran. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I, so, but I do remember, do, you know, doing a couple of smaller um, gatherings of providers in Sunset Park, probably back in 2014, around then. I didn't know if that was your organization. So. Um, no, that, 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 I don't recall that either. But one last question. Well, is, is this venture that you're, um, well, actually two questions, um, that you are hoping to be able to uh, launch in this November, this summer, is, is this the first time the, um, the, you have experience with outpatient? Oh, you've done out. Oh, have you done outpatient? No, no, I've been I've been working outpatient as a clinical director. I opened uh, oversaw five in Crown Heights, um, Jamaica Queens. Um, where else were the other where the three of them down here um, from two thousand and seven to two thousand and nine. Nine to eleven, I ran clinical director at uh, PNY in downtown Brooklyn. Um, one in opened one in Bay Ridge, uh, and I worked for the other one that was in this facility. So my experience for outpatient, I've got you know, probably 11, 12, 13 years directing outpatient programs. I have Elizabeth Rojas next. Elizabeth, you can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make a comment <clears throat> with some of the concerns, uh, and you know, as Maria was saying, uh, with the park and so on. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, I grew up in Sunset Park, Third Avenue, Fifty First Street. I would walk to my aunt's house on Forty Seventh Street, and uh, without going into my age. It was when they first opened up Up Rose, which was, it was drug infested, that whole area there. Uh, and that kind of brought me memories when Sam mentioned that. And I recall very, I recall very well thinking back how I used to be afraid to walk through there because I believe it was between 48 and 47th Street because in that center that they had there, everybody, they were all hanging out outside. It wasn't safe at all. Going forward into the future now, uh, as a broker and being in, involved in Sunset Park, uh, the community of Sunset Park, um, I, actually, I actually do work for a property owner that owns a building right next door on 39th Street, a six family building that she's owned that building for over 10 years, the building was in her family. Not yep. once, not once in the past five years, has this property owner that I work very closely with her, has she ever made a comment or complained about anybody hanging out outside or any kind of problem associated with the center? Not once. So Sam, um, Edward, your family, I, <clears throat> I commend you for the work that you do because I've been involved with Sunset Park and 39th Street, I have actually uh, been through there many times and not once, not once have I seen anything that would be discouraging about, uh, about your place. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I was, actually, I was actually one of the first uh, contractors in Sunset Park to actually start doing new construction, which I started 20 years ago. And if you remember clearly across the street from the firehouse where I do have my building, that was drug infested with an empty lot and people dying of overdoses there on that small little wooden house, which I knocked down. And that's how I started the construction there. And I also did construction 
throughout the neighborhood, 34th Street being another street that I did work on and put up an, an additional three pieces of property there, which was successful to local homeowners. And, all, and, and we really do care about the community and we keep it clean. And we do have our drivers that pick up and drop off people. And this is not something new that we're doing. We've been around for, for the last few years here and we really do run a tight ship. I have uh, Maria Roca again. Maria, you can uh, unmute yourself. And here we go. So continuing <laughs> with my just questions, um, who else occupies the building other than your organization? No one. Okay, so once, once you expand into however many floors, and remind, I, I know, yeah, I'm sure it was mentioned, how many additional floors will you be occupying if this, the RFP, if your proposal gets uh, accepted? Uh, at this point, the sixth floor of the building is our administra administration office, and soon to be our, our admission, admission office. Right now, it services as the cafeteria. The fifth floor, um, Sam built a beautiful terrace and our cafeteria will go on to the fifth floor along with a uh, patient lounge. The fourth floor is where we want to put the um, outpatient. Right now, it's our admission office for the detox, but that'll move. Um, where we got that? We're going down, Sam. Third floor is the detox. Second floor is the detox. And first floor has some offices in the front and a large uh, room in the back that actually um, we've been asked several times um, by the community to do different events in there. And unfortunately, uh, COVID kind of knocked those, event, those events. Um, the last point asked us to use the property and you know that was going to be a nation, but it fell through. So basically we go down to four I mean, there's really no space for anyone else to come into the building. Okay, so you'll be uh, occupying the, the building entirely. That's great. Right. Um, what, what, what are the hours for the outpatient? From um, the time people begin to arrive to the time the last person leaves? I'm looking at nine to five and maybe three to six, where um, depending on people's work schedule, like extending from five to nine, five to eight, because you know you have staff here. Um, you don't want people working till really late at night. Right now, you know, we're open 24 seven. So the outpatient evening hours would be based on what the need is for folks that are working. And the same with Saturday. I have Maria Torres next. Uh, Maria, you may unmute yourself. Hi, thank you. Uh, this is for Ms. Brown. Um, I don't know if you had said it. Do you uh, give methadone at this uh, facility? At, out, at, at detox, uh, in the detox, we are, uh, methadone is one of our uh, protocols, but only for detox. Nobody leaves with it. We are uh, registered under SAMHSA and the DEA. In the outpatient, no, we are not a. Uh, um, we will not be a methadone maintenance program. But okay. as close as we go to that is strict monitoring for Suboxone. Um, I've had experience with that, and it has to have strict monitoring to prevent diversion. So, do you have? Uh, I don't know if you said it. Did you say you have beds um, at the location as well? Like yeah, we, how many? Yeah, we're we're a detox now. We're looking to open outpatient. How many oh, beds do you have? 35. 35? Yeah, 35 beds, two okay. floors. Um, <laughs> and what medical, um, if any, uh, doctors or nurses do you have on site? Well, we have a medical director, uh, which is per regulations, who's board certified in medicine. Uh, right now we have two nurse, two nurse practitioners, who one is a psychiatric nurse practitioner, so they'll be working with us. If we um, can open the outpatient, they'll be working with us on the outpatient basis. We have 
RNs here, probably five RNs, probably 20 LPNs. Um, we have a certified social worker. We have one, two, three, four, five, six KSACs. Um, to admissions counselor. So right now, everybody in the facility, I mean, we have 50 employees because we're open 24 seven. We run, um, you know, we're open 24 seven. So we have, you know, medical staff here 24 hours a day, clinical staff from eight in the morning till sometimes nine, 10 at night, depending on patient's need. And then we have those 24 hours a day. I have Cynthia Felix next. Hi, I just had another question regarding growth considerations. And I know now you just want to grow to outpatient, but any thought about adding a second location considering the increased needs that are in the community, maybe not on this side, but in other areas of Brooklyn or in other parts or even um, the building? I think right I now. Don't work, Connie. Not to give you and the Benitas, but you know they have powerhouse construction. You know you could build it up. Like <laughs> doubt patients started. You know, as you can see, you know, four and a half years, almost five years into this project, we just started touching on opening an outpatient, and that was just based on you know people saying, "Why don't you guys do it? Why don't you guys do it?" Just you know. Just do it. So we're not a quick jumpers, right, guys? No, no. <laughs> and I have one last question. I know you just said you have about 50 employees. Are any of them from our neighborhood? Do you hire within the neighborhood or try to do so? Yeah, we try to do so. In fact, in fact, my clinical supervisor, um, her husband's from Sunset Park. And I think the family moved out, um, but you know she spent her married years, I think, on 40th Street, then over to 50th Street. So she knows Sunset Park real well, and she has family, you know, over here. I have a brother-in-law up on Sixth Avenue on the other side of the park. Um, he's lived there for many, many years, and stepfather who used to on uh, the park, the condos on the corner of 6th and 40th. So, you know, who if, if somebody is eligible to work and they're from this community, we don't have a problem hiring. Right now, we're looking for more unit aides. Um, we're looking for more LPNs. We're looking for more counselors. So, you know, whoever sends a resume, if they're from the neighborhood, great, because then you don't have any problems with, I missed the train. They could just walk to work. That'd be great. Yeah. So that'd be one. That's great to hear that you recruit from the neighborhood. Yes, yes, we do. So if you know anybody, just have them give a call and send their resume. I would love it. Will do. <laughs> Thank you. I have Jimmy Attilis next. Jimmy, you can uh, unmute yourself. <clears throat> Jimmy, you tell us. For the two brothers and Connie, I know that area is pretty, uh, it's, it's very, I don't see a lot of traffic in front of the area, but it's amazing that uh, Sunset Park has become like a shelter haven and uh, in the past year, three months or four months. And yes, we do need another facility here for the detox because I deal with these people every night at work. And uh, I know that I know that it's an issue and I'm a Sunset Park resident my entire 56 years of life. But I don't honestly, even the, the facility that's on 39th Street between 4th and, and 3rd, I think that should be it. like when it's good for the community board and, and the council people to consider Sunset Park industrial, why not put these facilities on First Avenue and away from the close to areas of the schools? And because I, I mean, I got to deal with these guys in the summertime. It's a lot harder for me because I live in a neighborhood. I live close to the Pena Park and these people are hanging out in the park from the morning till the midnight. And when I get out of work, I got to always look at the park because I had to make sure that nobody's looking at me. Somebody I dealt with in the ER who a nurse had to give Narcan to. <laughs> And it's upset that I was holding his limbs. I think I think these facilities. I think this neighborhood is 
the crime rate is very high here. And obviously, if you don't put a correlation with the with the it's the people that have moved into, you're crazy. Because even the 77 second precinct tells me a lot of the crime here has to do with unfortunate these some of these individuals don't that will, don't want to get help. Right, but remember, we've been here four and a half years, and we have an inpatient program, and we're just looking to expand to outpatient. Um, we're not a new facility, and we're here strictly as, as a detox. Our folks are with us five to seven days. We bring them here, and we make sure that they get to the next level of care. If they're homeless, we strongly, strongly encourage them to go to uh, residential treatment programs to get additional help, not knocking any kind of shelter system because I know how difficult it is. I opened a program in the old, um, across the street from Atlantic Avenue shelter. Uh, the program that was residential was under Father Peter Young for many years. So I do know the struggles that you're facing. And if you have a folk in your facility that is motivated to come to <clears throat> detail, motivated to go into residential treatment, we'd be more than happy to help that folk to get them off the street and out of the park. I have Maria Roca uh, next. Maria, you can unmute yourself. And here I am again. So, um, Two questions quickly, one after the other, and then uh, you, whoever wants to answer or can answer. One, do you have any plans to go higher, to go up, to add floors to the any of the building that you are um, cons that you're in right now, or any of the other buildings on 39th Street that you did construction with? Uh, who were, um, if you have any plans or are thinking of any of that. And then also, and I think I asked this before, but I asked it in a different way. Being that you were so, have been so successful as, um, as you have laid out on the detox model, mm -hmm. what, what motivated the expansion into outpatient rather than just expand the, um, uh, the detox model? Okay, Sam, you can answer the building thing because I so know that the, the, the first question on the building, the answer is the answer is no. We are not uh, looking to add any more floors to uh, to that building. So you have maxed your run. Uh, the, That's the, correct. Uh, FAR. Yep. The FAR. Okay. Okay. And plan to, to outpatient. It's um. I love outpatient. I've been very successful running outpatient. I see a lot of good work in outpatient. And when I see people that I'm completing the detox and they live on 41st Street and I can't send them to a program in the neighborhood, it's frustrating for me because I know that the odds of me sending them to downtown Brooklyn or, <clears throat> you know, 77th Street that they have to jump on a train um, or up to 13th Avenue or over to King's Highway, their success is not as as good. So it just, you know, I want people to complete detox and complete their recovery and outpatient is the way to do it. And so I spoke to them and they know I love outpatient and, you know, enough people ask you, why can't you guys just let me go downstairs or to another floor to continue my treatment? Why are you sending me far away? I just live right here. You know, that's the motivating factor. I have Maria Torres next. Maria, you could unmute yourself. Maria Torres. Last chance, Maria Torres. Jeremy, if we don't have anyone else other I than Maria. One last, I have one last one. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. uh, two last ones. Yes, we can, Maria Torres. Okay, so this is for Ms. Brown. Um, you have said before, correct me if I'm wrong, that mm -hmm. if the person in your program stops showing 
or comes is not consistent, they are out of the program altogether? No, I, I, I never said that. I, um, the, way the, the way that treatment is supposed to be is you're supposed to meet the patient where the patient's at. So if that is struggling or that patient relapses, then I need to look at what the staff is doing and what we need, what we need to do to motivate the treatment, you know, the treatment to, to help the patient. We're not, we're not supposed to throw people out. I'll give you a perfect example. If I have a, I had a young woman who was using so much heroin, it was absolutely ridiculous. So she got onto Suboxone. She did meet about school, but she was so hot. Am I supposed to throw her out because she's smoking a little pot? Or just encourage her, you know, to like stop smoking less. She was, she, she stopped doing the drug that could cause the most harm to her. And that's the, is you have to meet the patient where the patient's at and instill step by step if you throw them out then you're just putting them back on the street and starting so, them so those who are homeless and are mentally ill who are in your program who don't go back because they forgot because they're scared or something's going on it, that they can't go back are you telling me in your program you will go look for these people and try to find out what's happening with them right now we're a detox so right so, now right now you know they're just here on an outpatient level, um, if you're homeless, your level of care should be rehab or residential treatment because so your do, your your rate of success is less. So what, do you work with? So do you work with uh, the homeless outreach unit that the department, uh, uh, police department office, or, uh, or maybe the city? Do you work with them to reach out? If when the homeless population. When we open the outpatient, if that's the situation where we know that somebody is from shelter A and they have a case manager in shelter A, then we would communicate with shelter A, like your patient isn't coming here. There's also a big movement within the state for peer recovery coaches, certified peers, and we have to have them on site. It's their role to go out and help the people. The insurance companies have heart, they have health home. So it's a matter of setting each patient up that is at high risk with these various systems. So we can't do it alone. You know, there's a team that each person needs to be set up with. And as an outpatient program, it's our responsibility if we care for the patient to make sure they have all the systems in place. So yes, that is one of the things that would happen, you know, with ACT teams, if you need it, you don't see a patient, you contact the ACT team, you let them know what's going on. That's good treatment. And that's good outpatient treatment and good community care for a patient. And that's what, you know, I believe strongly in. And I have Elizabeth Rojas as our last speaker for the evening. Elizabeth, you can unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, Connie, I have a question. Um, so I was involved with um, uh, victims of, of domestic violence, um, VIP Mujeres in, in New York City for, for many years. And mm -hmm. so it, it's a, it was a program where they actually housed and so on. And, but it was very, very key, very low profile because nobody really knew what was actually going on right. uh, within the community. Um, and actually Sunset Park actually has there's a there's a place that they actually home the women's but nobody really knows about this this, this place my question is is um the 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 services that you have and in, in protecting your your clients are we from the pub are we from the community allowed to be able to come in and see the facilities or we, or is you're restricted to keep privacy and you're not allowed to bring in you know outsiders just, i mean basically just to you know come in and and, and see the place well Right now, right now with COVID, we don't let anybody in the building. Okay. We don't let family, we don't let anybody in the building. Um, what I'll give you, if, when we opened this facility, we had an opening, people came in, they looked. 
Um, but it is about protecting patient confidentiality. When it goes to domestic violence, I've worked with women and men that have been in DV shelters. And there's a lot of coordination because we need to make sure we don't have the abuser in the facility at the same time. Um, I remember working with women um, and holding them longer in an outpatient treatment setting because I knew that the spouse or the whomever was outside. So, you know, I'm familiar with all those kind of situations. You know, if we get this outpatient, if we eventually have Oasis do it, you know, we'll have an open house and, and people can come. But as far as the inpatient goes, um, because of patient confidentiality, we really don't give tours. Okay, thank you very much. By the way, uh, uh, I just wanna, based on um, what you have said and the dedication that you have put out throughout the years, I can see that you really, that your heart is in the right place. So, um, you know, thank you for the kind of work that you do, um, your services that you have done through all these years. Um, I, I think that it's a blessing. And I think that, you know, this place here is, uh, is very lucky to have you. Well, thank you. And, and you know, I must add with, with Sam is, we're also a very spiritually based program. Um, we believe everything happens for a reason and we're here for a reason. And our fellow man is what's important to us, no matter whether they're making a million dollars and they have a problem or they're that person that's just at their wits end. I mean, that's our, we're supposed to do that. That's what we're supposed to do is to help one another. Amen. So thank you for listening to us. And thank you so much for being here and sharing all of this important information with the group. Um, so uh, we're going to conclude with um, the committee members because I know you're asking for a letter of support. So we're gonna need a vote from the committee for that. But we thank all of you for coming and for giving a great presentation. And of course, for your service to this neighborhood all of these years. And uh, we look forward to your continued success. In thank the, you. In, in, in the outpatient realm. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have hey, a good night. Have hey, a good night. Wait, how do I leave? Okay, leave. Are we still on? Yes, we are still on. So, um, they are um, the Genesis Detox of Brooklyn, formerly uh, the Resource Beacon of Hope, located at 449 39th Street, is seeking a letter of support for their New York State OASIS application. Um, so I don't know if we have to have a motion for that on the committee level, Jeremy. Um, I, I think uh, that that would be uh, taking a position on this. So the, it is a letter of support. So it would be taking a position on it. Okay. So um, can we then call the roll on the committee members and find out, you know? Well, so is the motion to support the application? Yes, absolutely. And is there a second? The Genesis. I, I this is the for Jen Jenna that she's, she brought up. Both okay. The second one she brought up. That's what I wanted to confirm. Right. But yeah. Thank you. The, the, other, the other organization that presented previously was not here for any letter of support. They came basically to get information from us and input into what, you know, uh, they should be doing or whatever. But, you know, they're basically a new... Uh, organization that do, do not have accreditation yet. And so they were just wanting to introduce themselves to us and let us know, uh, you know, what their intentions were. But in terms of um, Genesis, they are asking for a letter of support now. I, I don't know who seconded the motion. Joan. Joan. Okay. 
So. So would you like me to call roll then? Yes, please. Okay, so I'm gonna mute everybody. When I call your name, please unmute yourself, uh, vote, and then mute yourself again. We will start with Cynthia Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Pat Ruiz. Definitely. Grizel Amador. Yes. Thank you. Joan Body. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Anthony Giglio. Barbara Lee. Christina Lem. Aurelis Martinez. Gloria Rodriguez Navoa. Gloria. Yes. Thank you. The vote is five in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions. Cynthia, you're muted. Thank you, John. Okay, so I want to thank everyone that um, participated tonight. I thought that the committee and the public in general did ask really great questions of both of the presenters tonight. And uh, uh, you will see my report on, on this meeting uh, before the community board meeting. I thank everyone for coming out. I have, have a I great have, night. I have a question. Just one Could last thing, guys. Uh, for all of us uh, that uh, knew Donna, and her, that was her, that's her building. Uh, that's what Pat had asked, and I had mentioned it to Pat. So we know that it is um, handicap accessible. Uh, it's, a, it's a new building. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Have I a have great a quick, night, everybody. Before everybody goes, Cynthia, I just have a, a clarification. The first mm -hmm. presenter, are they already in a location that they absolutely, to? Absolutely not. And to our understanding, they just identified that location, but it's not like they have a lease or anything like that. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's, uh, they don't even have state certification yet. So that's so this a is long an exploration. Process. This is just yes, it was because they have they received their um how should I say, uh, what is it there? Um, you know, their state, their state business, uh, license. Whatever they call it. Yeah. Their state business license or whatever. They just received that in May of 2021. So they, they're in the process of, you know, establishing what they're going to provide. Um, they began talking about, about their mission statement, which was one of my questions, and, and the services that they intend to provide wherever they're going to provide them. But it's not like they have a lease. They've just identified that building because there were medical services there prior. Um, so, you know, I thought that uh, Ms. Sierge G did, did, you know, her heart is in the right place. She's been in, uh, you know, NYU, Lutheran and NYU's ER for many years. She sees the problem. She knows that she wants to do something about it. Um, but of course, I think that she got the message that that particular location was not suitable for that. It's also not ADA accessible, which, you know, I brought up. So, um, and, and the, numbers that she will be serving are, are very small. She said they will be serving like initially 40 people or something like that. So, <clears throat> you know, um, I wish her the very best. Um, I just don't think that that particular location is something that is going to be comfortable for the neighborhood. And I think she gets that. She also got the message that she, if she really intends to provide really top-grade services, 
she really needs a building with an elevator where elderly people and handicapped people, because they're not just serving the uh, uh, clients. They are going to be serving the families of those people. And a lot of those people may, you know, have limitations that they won't be able to accommodate. Oh, it may behoove her to have conversations with uh, the presenters we just had. It's a good uh, yeah. place for her. I think I'm going to reach out to her about that. And she's actually listed. I see her. Yeah. Uh, her square. But um, yeah. I, I, she may be able to get some uh, good information and maybe mentorship or whatever from the uh, from the uh, Benitez family. Yeah. And maybe they might even be able to identify a building that is suitable for them as well. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, good night everyone. Bye. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, Jeremy. Bye -bye. Give your little guy a pet for me. Will do. <laughs> He's not as little anymore. Good night, no, everyone. Not. Thank Bye -bye. you, Cynthia. It was a very informative meeting. Thank you.